In this video, we're going to take a closer look at Home Assistant Blue. It says it's the perfect platform to run Home Assistant on, but is it the perfect platform for you? Stick around and we'll see if we can answer that question. What's up everyone? My name is Jeff and this is Slacker Labs, where we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. This week's video is all about Home Assistant Blue, and more specifically, whether it's the right platform for you. I think the big reveal back at the 2020 Home Assistant Conference in December caught a lot of us by surprise, but I think the vision behind Home Assistant Blue is solid. As a community, we should be doing more to make it easier for first time users to get started with Home Assistant. That's one of the reasons I make these videos. And Home Assistant Blue definitely makes it easier for a first time user to get started with Home Assistant. But ultimately, I think that all in one zero setup label is a bit misleading, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Besides, what kind of review video would this be if we didn't first talk about specs? Under this shiny shell is an Odroid N2 Plus. Inside is a six core ARM CPU, four gigabytes of DDR memory, 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage, gigabit ethernet, four USB 3 ports, and one HDMI. From a hardware standpoint, this is all stuff that you need. And the onboard storage is a nice upgrade if you've been living the SD card lifestyle. Software wise, Blue comes with the latest version of Home Assistant. And I mean latest version. Honestly, this was the one piece that really surprised me about Home Assistant Blue. I bought my bundle back on the day it was announced, but for the last four weeks, it's sat on my shelf. In fact, if you look back at my previous videos, you can see it there sitting in the background. For anyone getting started with Home Assistant, it can be confusing as to when to use a script, a scene, or an automation. Anyway, I finally got around to unboxing it and plugging it in in the last couple of weeks. Since there had been several updates since my Home Assistant Blue had shipped, I expected that as soon as I booted it up, I would have to apply some updates. But when I flipped over to the supervisor panel to do that, Home Assistant didn't find any updates. My first thought was it just hadn't had time to sync. But then I realized it was already updated to the latest version as of the day that I booted it, not as of the day that it shipped. If you've purchased any smart home tech, you know this isn't how it's supposed to work. We've all been there. You buy the piece of hardware, you plug it in. As soon as it connects to the network, it says it has to update its firmware or software, and then you go grab some coffee while this thing updates. Given that one of Home Assistant's core missions is better security, this one shouldn't have surprised me. But whatever black magic was involved to get this to happen should be used in other parts of the platform. It's the little details like this that make it easier for new users. But we also have to talk about the stuff that doesn't make it easier for new users. There is no built-in Wi-Fi with Home Assistant Blue. You can purchase a Wi-Fi module for your Odroid, but it's an additional cost. But seriously, running Home Assistant over a Wi-Fi connection is probably not the best idea. So this one might not be that big of a deal. The fact that there are no Zigbee or Z-Wave capabilities with this bundle, however, is probably a bigger deal. Z-Wave and Zigbee devices are a big part of the smart home ecosystem today. And if you're coming from another platform, you probably already have some of these devices. So if that's you, you're going to have some work to do once you get Home Assistant Blue plugged in and running. There are guides out there that can reduce your part to just copy and paste, but the DIY nature of adding these capabilities is going to be intimidating to a lot of new users. No doubt, there are technical reasons why these capabilities weren't included. Not to mention, it would have increased the price. But if Blue had included a USB dongle for the Z-Wave and Zigbee capabilities and could have reused that black magic that updated the core to auto-detect the hardware and install the integrations, this would have been an awesome all-in-one platform. As is, the all-in-one zero setup solution is going to require you to purchase some additional hardware and do some setup if you want to bring your Z-Wave or Zigbee devices into Home Assistant. And that brings us to probably the biggest reason most people choose another platform over Home Assistant, the learning curve. Home Assistant Blue doesn't really move the needle on the learning curve piece. And I don't think it should have been expected. But if for some reason you thought Home Assistant Blue would allow you to skip some of the more technical aspects of the platform, it doesn't. 
the Home Assistant experience is largely unchanged. The one big difference here is that instead of having to download an image and flash some hardware to get up and running, you simply just plug the Home Assistant Blue in and you're ready to go. And there's one more thing. The aluminum blue case is limited edition, which means at the time of this video, your chances to get one may already be gone. But you can download the plans to 3D print a case if that's something you need in your life. I have to say, as a piece of hardware, Home Assistant Blue looks really good, but I will probably be the only one in my house that ever sees it. My bundle cost $154 from Ameridroid in the US before shipping. This price point is only $5 more than a Raspberry Pi 4 bundle with a 128GB SD card on Amazon. And it's $70 more than an equivalent Raspberry Pi 3 bundle. For any of these options, adding Z-Wave and Zigbee capabilities is going to add another $40 or more to the price. And for the Odroid, if you really need that Wi-Fi, that module is going to be an additional $10. If you're thinking of getting started with Home Assistant and you're unsure which hardware to get, or you don't want to image drives, or you just don't want to spend the time evaluating what Home Assistant version is right for you, then Home Assistant Blue was built for you. Likewise, if you're already running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi with an SD card, then migrating to Blue will be an improvement in performance and stability, especially as your smart home grows. If you're running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi with an SSD, however, or an Intel Nook, or maybe even a PC that you had laying around, I'm not sure that Blue offers you any improvements. Home Assistant Blue is a solid foundation to start your Home Assistant journey on. I definitely recommend it for anyone wanting to get started with Home Assistant, but you're unsure where to start. But I think it falls short of an all-in-one and to an extent zero setup solution. And I know, the webpage clarifies that all-in-one means that Blue comes with a core, a case, and power which is not always the case with every Raspberry Pi. So, in that sense, Blue is all-in-one. And Zero Setup means that it comes with Home Assistant pre-installed, which that part is definitely magic compared to the DIY solution. So, in that sense, Zero Setup is not wrong either. But when compared to other options in the smart home platform market, like SmartThings, which I would consider to be an all-in-one Zero Setup solution, Blue is none of those. Don't get me wrong, if you want to build a smart home, I think Home Assistant is the best choice. And Blue is the best path if you don't want to get super technical. But if you're trying to compare Home Assistant Blue to SmartThings or even Hubitat, it's not apples to apples. Personally, I hope we see more stuff like this from the Home Assistant team. Especially more of that black magic that makes it easier for all of us to make our homes smarter. I think we're all looking for that platform that provides the perfect balance of power with user experience. And from my experience, I think Home Assistant is the closest to realizing that vision. In fact, I've already migrated my system to Home Assistant Blue, which we'll talk about more in the next video. But before you go, if you're looking for ideas on how to make your home smarter using Home Assistant, check out my other videos. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, Go automate the boring stuff.